Muslim man denied German citizenship for refusing to shake woman's hand in Germany. A German court recently ruled that a Muslim man who refused to shake a woman's hand should not receive German citizenship. The Lebanese doctor who came to Germany in 2002 said he refuses to shake women's hands for religious reasons. The administrative court of uh, Baden-Württemberg ruled that a person who rejects a handshake due to a, quote, fundamentalist conception of culture and values, end quote, due to seeing women as, quote, a danger to sexual temptation, was rejecting, quote, integration into German living conditions. The doctor applied for citizenship through naturalization in 2012 and passed the naturalization test with the best possible score. However, he was not grant granted citizenship due to his refusal to shake hands with the female official at the naturalization ceremony in 2015. The German court found that anyone who refuses to shake hands on gender-specific grounds is in breach of the equality enshrined in the German constitution. I support this. Rivka says me too. Um, you know, I'm against like saying that, oh, you don't get citizenship because you're a Muslim or you're a Christian or something like that. Um, but this is not based on the label of your religion. This is because you just can't seem to accept, you know, these countries, the country's values. Like you are, you know, I don't care that this is your religion. Like, just because your sky daddy says that you can't behave, some, you know, you can't accept the values of our countries. I'm not going to um, give certain privilege. I'm not going to just be like, oh, okay, other people, if they don't accept the values in this country, we're going to not be okay with it. But because you say that there's, like, there's ancient scripture, you know, this magic man wrote this book uh, 1,400 years ago that all of a sudden makes it A-OK, -okay, I mean that's religious privilege. I think that's that's fantastic. I think we, if we screen based on values, um, you know, people say like, oh, religion. If you say you're a Muslim, well, that's values. No, because a lot of people just ha are nominally Muslims. A lot of people just have the label without actually um, living by certain standards. Um, so I don't think just using the label as a screening process. I don't think that is fair. But if your actual ideas are influenced, if you're like a, a misogynist or a sexist or a homophobe or against secularism or against democracy uh, or for violence or against peace, um, if, you know, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not screening based on your religion. I'm, re I'm screening based on your crappy values. And if you, if you're, if your value system is like, sorry, my, my magic, Daddy told me that I can't touch women. I'm like, yeah, well, guess what? This is not the right country for you. Goodbye. Rivka, you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to just um, elaborate more on what you said. So, especially the values, but if not even such the value. I mean, you could hold whatever values you want. It's your actions, right? You can think that it's bad to touch women, but you're willing to abide by what the values the standards the law of the country is and gender you know segregation or discrimination against someone based on their gender is against the law in germany which they've stated it you know violates this particular part of their constitution so it's not just what he believes or what he may value but it's his actions he's actually acting out these but, particular set of beliefs by refusing to obey the law and by stating that he doesn't have to obey the law because he is a magic sky friend. Right. I mean, I mean, okay, but even if it was beliefs, okay, so like Gossam is saying why should what he why he should accept the values, just obeying the rules is not enough. I think obeying the rules is enough for you to stay out of jail. But citizenship is more than just obeying the value, uh, uh, obeying the rules. I think citizenship is also based on if you're compatible with this country's values. I think I'm okay with screening not just based on actions, but also values. If you are homophobic, for example, even if you're obeying the laws, I'm okay with screening based on values. 
you know, yeah, you're obeying the values, great job. While you're here, when if you're a permanent resident, we're not going to put you to jail, even if you're a homophobe. You, we're not going to shut, you could say your homophobic views, nobody's going to stop you. Uh, but we don't owe you a citizenship, right? We don't, like, like, hey, give me citizenship, even though I have crappy ideas. Like, no. Why? Why do you think you deserve, like, citizenship is a privilege. You don't, mm -hmm. You know, you don't have a right to a country's citizenship. If they don't want, if they don't want, Germany doesn't want to give it to you because you have crappy ideas. Even if you're not, even if you're acting properly, they don't want, they don't want you as a citizen. They don't, they don't have to give you citizenship. Uh, Susanna. I have more information on this case, just for more context, to be more fair. So he argues that he had promised his wife not to shake hands with another woman. Um, his petition against the ruling was um, originally unsuccessful, but following this recent decision, the court said that the man can appeal to the federal level due to the um, fundamental significance of the case. Um, the uh, VGH, which is the German acronym for the court, um, described the handshake as a common nonverbal greeting and farewell ritual, which are independent of the sex of the involved parties, adding that the practice goes back centuries. The, um, the handshake is therefore, quote, deeply rooted in social, cultural, and legal life, which is the way that, the sh that shapes the way that we live together. Um, da, 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 da. And so, in addition, the man's refusal in this case had the effect of lending validity to a, quote, Salafist perspective on the social ramifications of um, uh, relations between men and women. Um, the court said it made no difference that the man has now declared he will not shake hands with men either. Um the man claimed that he wanted to affirm the equality of men and women, but the court found that this was merely a tactical move. Um, and also, so the thing is that when you um, apply for uh, citizenship through national naturalization, um, you have to sign a declaration of loyalty to the German constitution and against extremism. So he did do that. He did pass this naturalization test again with like the highest possible score. However, I found, um, thank you to XMNA, I found a translation of this um, German ruling that says a purely verbal commitment by the um, applicant to the free democratic basis, a basic order is not sufficient to fulfill the naturalization requirement of XYZ paragraph and clause. Um, the commitment to a free democratic basic order must also apply in terms of content. So they're saying like it must be demonstrated through the content of your character, so to speak. Um, you can't just, yeah, pay lip mm -hmm. service. Inadequate lip service is given, for example, if the naturalization applicant avoids clear answers to questions from the court that have allowed conclusions to be drawn on his understanding of Islam and his attitudes to the free democratic basic order. The, if there are well-founded doubts that the naturalization applicant is committed to the free democratic basic order of the Federal Republic of Germany, discretion can be exercised according to paragraph blah, 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 blah. Um, um, so, yeah. So the they are saying it's his actions. It's not just that he said, yeah, I agree with this, but then he did not act on what he claimed to mm -hmm. agree with. Respect uh, for the free democratic basic order requires that the naturalization applicant unconditionally accepts the powers of democratically legitimized legislator to legislate, even if the state law is in contradiction to parentheses supposed or actual religious commandments. Uh, Bassem is asking, so accepting the values should be law. I never said that. I specifically said that you don't have to accept the value. If you don't accept the values, you're not going to go to jail. You're not, you haven't done anything criminal, but the, uh, but the country doesn't owe you citizenship. I think VHS is going a little bit too far. VHS YouTube is saying anyone who doesn't integrate this, uh, in the society, they have come in, should be deported. Why come to a Western country if you are closed minded? No, that's, that is too far. I think you should be able to, if you're not, if you're obeying the laws, uh, even if you have different values, you should be able to get residentship, you should be able to get a work visa, you should be able to get a student visa, but I think you don't, you, the country doesn't owe you citizenship. I don't think like deporting everybody because like, 
Yeah, I think that's going a bit too far, okay? But again, the country doesn't owe you citizenship, but that doesn't mean they don't want to give you, you know, residentship. I mean, I think the, the, I think the standards for residentship or work visa or student visa should be a lot lower than the standards we have for citizenship, right? Whatever those standards are. And I agree with you, Armin, because citizenship comes with certain rights and it endows someone with something on a higher level in terms of how you're seen under the law, how you're seen in the country, the things you can and can't do, like voting. You know, most of the time permanent residents can't vote. Um, maybe in their local elections, some countries are different, but usually in the you know national ones. So you are endowed with certain rights, but you also have certain responsibilities that come with citizenship. So yeah, and having right of- different you know level of standard of what's acceptable is totally, in my mind, absolutely not any kind of contradiction at all or hip- hypocrisy. Actually, Rivka, very, very good point because um, giving citizenship to people that have values that your country is not based on eventually will lead to your country's values changing because citizenship comes with the right of voting, right? That's why you really need to be careful, not just with action, but people's values because your secularism and all the other rights that you have fought for could just go away if all of a sudden you keep giving voting rights to people that are against the values of your country, right? And that's why screening for values, not just behavior, is very, very important uh, when you're, you know, when you're giving people citizenship. It's right. so interesting. I found this other part of this legal document. Basically, his the plaintiff's wife, after this incident, announced in a letter that her husband had previously returned her handshake to the employee. Wait. But she herself is a very jealous woman, and she does not like it when her husband touches other women. She therefore urgently asked him not to do this. The employee of the district office misinterpreted the whole situation. She assumed that her husband did not understand equality. However, his actions have nothing to do with discrimination. Her husband simply refused to shake hands out of respect and love for her. As a doctor, her husband naturally has physical contact with patients she tolerated this because it was medically necessary if her husband were a dishonest person he would have just shaken his hand and she would have never found out about this so that's their defense what goes on in between their marriage and between the two of them hardly matters in the court of law as far as i'm concerned i mean her jealousy you know what i mean i don't know it seems weak Mm -hmm. from a legal standpoint yeah, and but, this guy. Yeah, I don't think they're. I think they're. Yeah, they're coming up with excuses. This guy is Muslim, and he's not shaking a woman's hand. We know what's going on here. But go on, sorry, Rifka. Gonna comment. Gonna comment about um, this comment about um, Afashin's. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced your name, buddy. Um, if saying just playing devil's advocate, what if you're a born citizen? Should you be made stateless because you have ba- bad values? So there's a difference between mm. bringing someone in from the outside and giving them or allowing them to have this right of citizenship versus just being born that way. I mean, I'm sorry, but it, it, maybe it sets up two tiers, but it, there obviously are several tiers. There's, you know, work visas, there's tr- tourist visas, there's resident uh, visas, you know, there's temporary. Vi- so there already are these sets of tiers, okay? And you, if you're born there and you have bad values, you want to try and if they act on those, then that's an issue that's separate from just deporting someone. But as Armin stated, you're not owed citizenship mm-hmm. by that country. They get to choose who they want to bestow this privilege and these rights upon. Right. And, and if you're born there, you they don't, the choice is made already and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, I'm not sure that that argument, but I see where you're coming from in terms of having a discussion. Okay. So Afshin, if you take someone's citizenship away, that is, uh, it's illegal. Cause, yeah, but it should be legal because that will completely, rock the foundations of the meaning of you being a citizen of your country like 
it's kind of like saying like oh i have a scar in your hand oh let me just take it out with an rpg or something like that like basically the whole the meaning of what it means to be a german citizen like you're threatening everyone's citizen you know it just that's a very dangerous precedent to set that people's citizenship could be taken away based on their um values that that is like that is like um you know that that means that all the rights and all the values and all the freedoms people could enjoy can arbitrarily be taken away by an authoritarian government you're giving the government too much influence and too much power if you do that that is like you don't want to even go there right the meaning of what it means to be like of what it means to be german all of a sudden changes because of uh, some bad actors but yeah i just wanted to make one other point this question is a really good question because it actually demonstrates what citizenship means. Mm -hmm. When you become a citizen, you are endowed with certain rights that you do, or when you're born as a citizen through, you know, just accident of birth, you are endowed with certain rights that you do not necessarily have if you are not a citizen. And so they can choose to give those to you and allow you to become a citizen. That's the key point about being a citizen is that you do come, it does come with these sets of rights and it means a certain thing. And Armin's point about just taking it away. Well, then what happens to the value of the citizenship? The citizenship has value because of what it gives to you as an individual in terms of the rights that are bestowed upon you by that. So, if you could just do that, then there's no point in having a citizenship test or allowing people or not allowing people because it's just arbitrary. So I think that that really illustrates why it's important to make this distinction and why it's important and why there's nothing wrong with saying we're not going to ex give you this privilege or allow you these specific set of rights because we don't feel that whatever it is about you, you know, whether it's your values, your actions, your, you know, if you committed crimes, whatever, don't comport with our values, our uh, sort of framework for what it means to be a citizen. Yeah, and I mean, rendering someone stateless is actually in violation of Article 15 of the 1948 Universal De Declaration of Human Rights, which is always a document that I look towards kind of as a guiding light, personally. Um, and this was a huge debate in the discussion of Shamima Begin, Begum, who was a British national who's been um, rendered stateless by the United Kingdom because they removed her citizenship um, because they believed that she had a claim to um, a Bangladeshi citizenship due to her involvement as a bride of Daesh. Um, I'm not sure if YouTube flags that word. <laughs> um, Say ISIS. Okay, of ISIS and ISIS bride. Um, Bangladesh is not going to accept her either. So I believe she's still um, in all whole in Syria, um, and it's it's a continu it's a massive debate in Britain over what to do with this. Um, now she's a young adult. Now she's I believe eighteen or twenty, and um, and like Armin said before, rendering her stateless because of this is devaluing the British citizenship itself. Um, but they've recently, a court has ruled that she can come back to Britain to contest this decision because they didn't even allow her to stand in court herself while revoking her citizenship. So she's not back there yet, but it'll be interesting to see how this develops. And it's, yeah, it's, um, that's, that's not something I support in any shape. And that's an interesting debate too, because often when you, um, are treasonous to your country or you fight against your country actively go to war against the country of which you are a citizen that has consequences now whether those consequences are you are no longer a citizen or you're put in jail or you're shot or whatever the the ruling is on that i think that that's really important to to 
talk about in the discussion. You know, I don't know how it's going to play out, but when you leave your country and then you actively work against them with a foreign army, that's going to have consequences. But that's part of the responsibility of citizenship. Yeah, but I think the consequences should be jail, fines, court dates. It shouldn't be Due like... process. Right. I'm, 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 no, yeah, I'm, go ahead. No, but I, I think it shouldn't be like, we're going to take your citizenship away. I don't know. if I don't think that's a good idea. I think that's like devaluing your citizenship. I think yeah. it, should be based, it should just be punishment. It's like, oh, your crime was really bad. But obviously, even though, like, oh, you, you, you killed this many people, okay, you go to court, you get defense, and then you go to jail because of the crime you committed. Oh, but this crime was extra bad, so we're just going to take your rights away from you? Like, I mean, what? Like, no. Um, yeah, yeah you, no, no matter how bad the crime is, you're a citizen, you get to defend yourself, you lose in court, you, pun you get punished for it. Like we can't just willing just come and take your citizenship away. That's well, I think your point is that, really point is a good yeah. point because that's what it means to be a citizen is you have this ability because you are endowed with these rights. When you're not a citizen, you don't necessarily have the same rights. People can just deport you and say we don't want you here anymore. So that this this is the whole discussion of what it means to be a citizen of any country, which I think is as Armin was saying is really. It does sort of make this, the idea of citizenship less important or takes or devalues it if it's just arbitrary, like you were saying. Oh, bad crime, super bad crime. Yeah, yeah. When people get afraid or angry, all of a sudden they throw away the rights and the values that the country has fought so much for. Even if the even the crime, even if the most, even if somebody committed like I did. Four or five genocides. Yeah, you still are a citizen. Even if you did that, you still go to court. You still are, you know, you still get to defend yourself as a citizen. And then you go to jail forever. That doesn't just be like, oh, this was this was super duper bad. Let's take your citizenship away. Like, great job. Because of now the entire country, the entire meaning of what it means, like the entire meaning of citizenship in your country just changed. Um... You, you just devalued it. Now you gave the government the authority to make, to go and take the rights away from c certain citizens. And like, oh, people saying like, oh, but if you're this, if you're super duper bad, you shouldn't have these rights. No, that does, you don't understand what these rights mean. These rights are supposed to be, to put, you know, there to people because who gets to decide how bad these crimes are, right? You have to be able to, the court decides, okay? But if you don't even have the, your citizenship, there's not going to even be a due process, right? So if you say, like, we're going to decide that this person is a really evil per a criminal, so forget the due process. If you set that precedent, then the, cr the, the mob, the people, at some point are going to decide that somebody's evil and they even haven't committed the crime. So in this case, say maybe they committed the crime, but if instead of having the, the citizens' day in court... You're saying, like, let's take their rights away so that they can't even defend themselves. But the precedent that you're setting is that eventually somebody's, somebody will not even get a chance to defend themselves. And you're going to get the government the opportunity for people not to, even to be, not to be able to even defend themselves. And maybe innocent people. Um, like, think about it. What you're doing, let's say you have person A and person B. Person A committed... Four or five genocides, and we know it for sure. And we're like, forget this person's rights. He doesn't deserve his rights. Let's take the rights away from him. No due process. You're not a citizen anymore. Okay, great. Now, what you have done is person B hasn't committed any crime, but is everybody's convinced that they're coming to the crime. And the government is like, you know what? You can't even, we don't need evidence. We're going to just take your citizenship away. What rights? You don't have any rights anymore. Ha, huh? like, good. How are you going to defend yourself? You're not a citizen anymore. Right. So, again, don't devalue your citizenship because of one goddamn person, no mm -hmm. matter how evil that person is or is, is, isn't. We've triggered so many people in the UK in our life. Yeah. Well, honestly, I can understand what they're saying. Like a lot of them don't want her back. But this sort of is 
adjacent to a discussion we had last week about the nature of law, right? It's law, you know, it's a country of laws, not of men, right? And human beings have emotions and they get angry and they, you know, want to make special case scenarios, but that's why you have laws. And that's why the law itself decides. And that's why you are given specific rights so that people are supposedly equal under that. No matter how bad or good you are, you get a defense and you have the right to do that. And then you are judged by those laws and then Mm -hmm. you are, you know, sentenced by them, not by people's emotions or by extrajudicial feelings or I mean, I get it. I understand what they're saying. I, I'm not saying I don't understand the emotionality behind it, for sure. It's, hmm. And I mean, well, part of it has to do with, like, I think there's, because of how different people previously associated with ISIS, um, brides, um, have been treated um, upon return to countries like Norway and England. I think there's a feeling that they don't want her back because they do not believe that she actually will be hey Susanna I did got cut uh, for you too Rivka can you hear me I was yeah I can hear you yeah anyways I'm going to respond to Afshin's comment Afshin saying should there be a difference between naturalized versus born citizens nope because then you're creating a two tier system and you're basically again setting a precedent for your citizenship to mean something else, right? You see, you're, when you're a citizen, you're a citizen, you're a citizen, you're a citizen, okay? Don't create a two-tier two tier system. Like some, you know, be, this is the animal farm kind of nightmare. All, all our citizens are equal, but some are more equal kind of situation, okay? Do not do that, guys. Do not do that. Samantha is also saying... Um, she doesn't deserve to be a citizen. Well, I'm sorry. If you're a citizen, then you're a citizen. Even if you don't deserve it, I'm sorry. It should be a one-way thing. Okay? Too late. She's a citizen now. You shouldn't be able to take it away. You, you already, even if she doesn't deserve it, she has it now. You shouldn't be able to take it away. You're, if you take it away, you're setting a very dangerous precedent. Okay? Anyways, I do think uh, we should be able to go to the next news. Samantha is saying I totally disagree on Facebook. Okay. Um, all right. That's should okay. We... Okay. So, uh, wait. Let me just do one more comment. She went out there and has um, red fluid, I'm going to say, <laughs> for YouTube say. She went out there and she has red fluid on her hands due to her choice. She could, she could once she saw what happening, have rethought it, but no, she went for red fluid. Okay, you guys are missing the entire point. Mm-hmm. I told you that even if somebody committed five or six genocides, if you're you a citizen, say that, but you can't say <laughs> be yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can, I can say genocide. I can't say red fluid. Um, oh my god! Even if she committed five or six genocides by herself without any help without any help just by herself okay she's a citizen she gets a lawyer she goes to court she gets the guilty verdict she goes to jail okay doesn't matter how much red fluid she has on her hand i mean it does matter but not but you don't take people's citizenship away from them okay you just that's how that's how you defend what your country stands for but that's and that's what citizenship is mm. it endows you with specific rights and one of those rights in the most demo- in democratic country like england is that you can defend yourself against charges brought against you you have yeah. the right to do that and you have the right to be you know in the court you know and see the charges have them heard and have a defense all right. Um, we do need to go to the next. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why. What has What's holding you back? Okay. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like, bell, <laughs> and also, if, you, if you're not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that... They want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos. But nah, 
you may, we think is no and oh look oh they also hit the bell button but nah you guys are too controversial we want to show them mainstream stuff we want to show them cnn or cat videos or whatever but if there are people like no we want to see atheist republic and youtube is like no, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link, there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well. And share, share our videos because... You know, we do get demonetized, that's an obvious, on every one of our videos, so F that, but we don't care about <laughs> that anymore. But we also get deprioritized, and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritized, what does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right, and all that, you know, on, the, on people's homepages, and that's how channels grow. Unfortunately, we can't grow, so we need you guys to share our videos.